Um, all right, everyone. Um, so the last time I did this talk, it was a one-hour talk. Um, and I normally talk very fast. So if I'm going too fast, it's not you, it's me. And uh, feel free to slow me down. Um, so um, this is not really about my work. Um, it's about um, the work of Matt Rocklin, uh, who is now at Continuum. Um, and basically, it's about how to make streaming easy. Um, and yeah, how to keep streaming straight and be able to handle larger data than your computer could normally handle. Um, so this is a live IPython notebook, with the exception of one little bit, which took too long for the live session. Um, so first thing, uh, do the preamble, import numpy, make map.lib plots inline. Um, and I also want to print matrices more nicely, so on that. Um, OK, so most people think about two types of data, and that's small data, which fits in your laptop. You use NumPy, you just handle any which way, and it works. Um, and big data, which is too big to fit in your laptop, and so you put it on a cluster, and you, know, you chunk it up manually, um, and run QSub, um, and it's generally a big pain in the ass. Um, so this talk introduces another type, uh, which Matt refers to as medium data, uh, which is data that will fit on your disk uh, or on you know, a big disk, um, but will not uh, fit in your RAM or will struggle to fit in your RAM. Um, and most people, when they get that kind of data, they still go to the HPC, they still chunk it manually and put it on the computer. And that's certainly what I did for many years. Um, but actually, what you can do is you can stream through that data and process it sequentially on your laptop, and it doesn't take that long at all. Um, and it saves you a lot of hassle of having to log into clusters and so on. Um, OK, so this, hopefully, most of you will be familiar with. Um, let's just take the mean of this particular function, and that's not actually the plus one should be inside the parentheses. Let's fix that. OK, so um, we're just, we have this data table, um, expert.tsv, which is tab separated values. Uh, we load it with NumPy, we take the log, and we take the mean along the zeroth axis. OK, and that works, and that's fine. Uh, that works for little data. As long as your data becomes too big, um, it, you'll struggle to do this, because you're making copies of the data all over the place. So counts plus one creates a brand new uh, array of the same size as your data. Then the log creates a whole new array. Um, I mean, it should be quick, but um, this can get out of hand very quickly. Um, so how do we stream through the data? Let's do the simplest example, which is uh, just streaming through text in a file. Um, so in Python, uh, when you iterate over a file, you just get lines. Um, so here I open the file name, and then for every line in the file name, um, if the pattern is in the line, I'm going to print the line number in the line. Um, so that's my sort of quasi-grep. Um, and if I look at my um, folder, I've got this 146 megabyte file. Um, go down. I'm going to use um, Ian Oswald's um, IPython memory usage to show you that we can go through this file. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice tool. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, OK, so now what um, the memory usage thing does is it will print however much RAM your cell used um, during execution. And so if we do simple grep in that 146 meg file, um, it finds my line, and it used a whopping 27 kilobytes of RAM. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so let's turn that off for now. Um, so this is where I kind of gave up on streaming a long time ago. I knew about yield, um, but it can quickly get um, sort of unyieldy. Um, so this is my streaming version of the um, log plus one mean. Um, we're going to read the TSV uh, one line at a time, and then we're going to yield the NumPy array corresponding to that line. Um, then for 
every array that we get in an iterator, we're going to take the log plus one uh, of the array plus one and yield it. And then the mean, we'll just do a running mean uh, algorithm on all the arrays that are being passed in. And so if we take the read TSV of the file, take the log and take the mean, um, we should get the same result. Um, but what does this all um, mean and how is it different from actually um, just processing the full data set? So in traditional programming, or well, sorry, batch programming, um, you would read the TSV and this would read the entire file and so this would finish executing and then the log uh, would take over and then the mean would take over. Um, but what's happening here, uh, we can make clear by just putting print statements everywhere. Um, and so every time that we um, stream through a line, we're gonna print, we're reading this line, and so on. Um, and so what you'll see, hopefully, is that the functions, even though they're nested, uh, they're actually taking turns processing the data. So first you read the line, then you take the log of the line zero, then you add line zero to the running mean. Then you go back to line one, log of the line one, add line one. Um, but I could never keep the yield straight in my head um, until uh, Matt Rocklin published this blog post. Um, I think it's called Word Counting and Verbosity. Um, and it's definitely worth a read. Um, and it introduces his tools library. Okay. So let's import uh, tools as tz and then tools.pipe um, essentially passes something through um, several functions uh, one after the other. Okay, so you take the file input, you pass it through read tsv, c, ah, read tsv log and mean. Um, and this is all then streaming because those functions are generators or take generators. Um, okay, um, so I think that already, even though it's just a little bit of um, syntactic sugar, it already looks a lot better than just nesting a whole bunch of parentheses. Um, and you can make it even um, more compact, and you have to write a lot less. If you have lines that just process things one at a time, you just use this curried map function. Um, so currying, um, it's a bit too long to explain properly now, but essentially what it does is if a function expects more than one argument and you only give it a few, instead of giving you a value error or whatever argument error, I don't know what it is, um, it will just return a function that takes one less argument um, and does what it would do if you gave it both arguments at once. So line to array processes things lines one at a time. CMAP will, press it, will make it process the stream. Um, and same for this log one, which just takes the log of one array. And then you pipe that into the mean. Okay, so that does the same thing. So now you can start to think of um, your data not as a big chunk of data, but as a stream of data that gets passed through all of these functions one after the other. Oh, sorry, wrong button. Okay, um, so let's do some practical examples. Um, this is using um, scikit-learn's PCA, um, which has a partial fit function, but you still need to manually chunk your data and say, all right, I'm gonna call partial fit, partial fit, I'm gonna call partial fit. Um, so now I'm just gonna do a function which takes the samples and component, components, um, and then it's gonna pipe my samples through this partition function, also from tools, which takes um, streams of items and gives you a stream of tuples of many items. Um, so it partitions them by 50, which is the batch size that my IPCA expects. Then it t takes those tuples, makes arrays, and then calls IPCA partial fit. And then I return the IPCA object. Okay, and so if I do this on the iris data set, um, I'm taking my file name, piping it to open, now I've got a stream of lines, piping it to line to array, I've got a stream of arrays, and then I pipe it into streaming PCA. So that gives me the PCA object that will transform uh, my data. And now if I run through it again, I can get the transform um, of the data set. And this is just their plotting function. 
Um, and if you've seen the Iris PCA, that's what it looks like. Um, the nice thing about all this, Iris is a tiny data set. I didn't need to do streaming at all. But I know that I can give a data set of almost any size to this function, and it's going to work fine. Um, and that's pretty awesome. Um, OK, Kamer counting is a cool application of genomics. Um, if you're trying to get reads of data and you're trying to toss out the ones that are erroneous, um, you can split it into overlapping uh, windows uh, called Kmers. And so if you say you're getting English text, if you see a Kmer to be or knob to, that's going to be much less frequent than to be or not to. So if you count the Kmers, then by frequency you can d decide which ones to discard and which ones not to. Um, so um, this is a bit too complicated to go in the time we have, but basically I'm passing my sequence file files. Um, then I'm going to filter lines, filter out lines that are names, not sequence. Um, then I take the sliding window function, um, which basically takes my stream and splits it into sliding windows. Um, and then I do this frequencies function, which is just counting things. All right. So again, it's it's nice that you can see everything that the function is doing in just one call, um, step by step. Um, so now if I plot this. You can see there's a distribution of values. Um, and then at the left, there's all of these cameras that only appear once, and there are cameras that have errors in them. OK, and then this is the most complicated model here. Um, so I really don't have time to go into what Markov models are. Um, but I'll do a bit of setup. Um, so this will take a bunch of FASTA files and then give me a stream of characters one by one. Um, so all I'm doing is taking the files, uh, converting the stream to letters, and then filtering out only those that are only nucleotides. Um, and then this will take my sequence, so the genome that is produced by the other thing, um, apply a sliding window of two, and then get the index in an umpire array uh, corresponding to those two um, nucleotides, and then it will increment the count. And then we divide that by the um, column. Ah, all right, we're good. Um, OK, and again, I'm going to oh, sorry, this is the bit that I've pre-run because it takes too long. OK, so if we watch the memory and we run this, uh, this is a 146 megabyte genome. Um, we process and we get the Markov model. Um, it's a bit slow. It's not optimized at all. Um, but it used up 23 kilobytes of RAM. Uh, I think that's pretty awesome. And you can actually go through a whole human genome. Um, and this is running on my Core M laptop. Um, so you, would sh you wouldn't expect it to be fast. Um, and you could do a human genome in an hour and a half, which is not too bad at all. Um, and so that's the model. And um, these are repeat sequences here. And this is. Um, non-repeat sequence, and you can see that some of the transitions are different, like these two. Um, so again, we could scale this up to whatever size we wanted. Um, oh, that was, sorry. Um, so you can do this with images as well, and I'm out of time, so ask me about it later. And the last thing I want to say is, um, if you get to learn this, don't say I'm going to convert it to streaming later, because um, this is basically what happens. Uh, to, do, to do things don't get done. Um, so make it streaming from the beginning if you know that you can, for example, with the streaming piece here. Okay, so there's time for uh, one or two quick questions. So, uh, yes, we'll do this one and then go. No. Uh, thanks. Streaming is super useful, super important. One caveat, and goes to that. Before you do this, use the proper algorithms. And what I find is it's sometimes like harder to think about the proper algorithm when you're streaming. And your example about Khmer counting. If you're actually going to do Khmer counting in production, the way you're going to do it is using probabilistic data structures like Bloom filters sure. or okay. Count Sketch. Yes. Um, but you can actually still do this thing where you put a Bloom filter in one of those steps. Yep. And if the next speaker can really plug the laptop, that would be nice. Yeah, I was wondering, because it sounds like a very interesting way to work, uh, but are you, n are you not basically uh, sacrificing the, 
the processing time for uh, memory usage because it looked a lot slower than the NumPy uh, version. <laughs> um, it's, it depends on your task. It doesn't have to be slower. You just need to put the right things in there. The, the overhead is actually tiny uh, for streaming. Um, yeah. So it's just because I chunk test text in a particularly stupid way. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. One.